Animals can um, affect the environment in a number of different ways, but if we look at climate change in particular, it's mainly through the production of two greenhouse gases. The first is methane, and this is formed by internal digestion processes, mainly from ruminant animals and also from stored animal manure. And the second gas then is nitrous oxide, and that comes about through the use of both uh, organic and inorganic fertilisers. My own area of research revolves around the nutrition of the animal and the impact that nutrition has on excretion of predominantly nitrogen to the environment. Ruminant nutrition in Ireland or ruminant uh, systems are based very much around um, grazed grass, as we can see here uh, with our cows out in, in Lyons Estate. Um, but at various times of the year, animals are fed concentrate feeds or silages to, to supplement grass or, for example, during the housing period during the winter time. Uh, so we're very interested in looking at the impact of nutrition during those periods periods on excretion of nitrogen. We have a current programme on the use of byproducts in dairy cow diets. So cereals are used extensively in concentrate feeds for ruminant animals. But cereals are costly and also um, as human population increases, uh, cereals are required more and more to feed the human population. So we need alternatives for feeding livestock. So byproducts, for example, from the bioethanol industry are becoming more popular for ruminant feeds. We're interested in looking at these byproducts products and their impact on milk yield and milk composition for example in dairy cows or meat production in beef animals and also then their impact on the environment and that is much less known. In terms of nitrogen balance, what we use is basically an analysis of the nitrogen in the feed, so the grass or the concentrate feed or the silages, and then analyse the faeces and also the urine then for um, nitrogen output. And what we do then is what's called a nitrogen balance. So it's nitrogen in minus nitrogen out. I definitely think that people are more concerned with the carbon footprint of the food that they're eating, particularly in wealthier countries in Europe and in North America, for example. Um, farmers themselves can impact or can influence the carbon footprint of the food that they're producing, for example, through participation in agri-environmental schemes, through modernising their farm equipment and um, machinery, for example, so that they're more energy efficient. and all also um, just keeping productive animals on the farm, so having fertile animals that produce large quantities of milk and, and meat, you know, they can definitely influence the carbon of footprint. From the 1st of April 2015, uh, EU milk quotas will be abolished. So Ireland is set for fantastic growth in the dairy sector after that time. Um, as well as feeding grazed grass, farmers feed other feedstuffs at various times of the year. And that um, will increase in a, in a post-quota environment where farmers will be looking to maximise milk production. So this research is very important. We want our feedstuffs used efficiently. We want them to have negligible impact on the environment. And in a no quote environment that is going to become all the more important.